for your second task in this assignment, you are going to be documenting four patterns consistently used in Romero Brito's artwork. So you're gonna look through the images provided in the Google slide document that I've shared with you. And you are going to identify four patterns that you see being repeated in the artwork. So not just in one piece, but in multiple pieces. You will also be documenting how the color is used to create pattern. So let's go ahead and talk about setting up your page. So what I did, just like I did in the other task, is I actually just went around my house and picked up some um, blocks that are my son's and I used those to lay out my page with four sections. Now, you don't have to do the same exact shapes. You could do circles, um, you could do hearts, whatever you want, as long as you have four sections laid out on your paper to put your patterns in. You'll also notice that some of my boxes are bigger than some of the others and that's fine, okay? Now, the next thing I want you to do once you have your boxes laid out is that I want you to add the heading or title pattern and color somewhere on your page. And once again, you'll notice that I used some stencils I had laying around the house to uh, put the words in or put the headings in, okay? So, once we have it set up and we've documented, or I should say we've studied the artwork and we have identified four patterns, we're going to document them in our visual journal. So for my purposes, I'm going to flip this page under just so I have a little bit more room to work here. And I'm gonna start with my top box and I'm gonna start and do one example for you, give you some tips and pointers, and then you're going to complete the rest of the boxes on your own. So let's start with a very easy one that you probably noticed. Romero Brito uses a lot of stripes in his artwork. So I'm going to start lightly with a pencil and I'm going to sketch in a line. Now this isn't stripes yet, okay? Now I want you to be thoughtful when you do this. If you did a little stripe like this, that wouldn't be very accurate. Romero Brito's uh, stripes are spaced pretty um, there's a fair amount of distance between them. So I'm gonna go in and put in my next line. And I'm going to try and space these as consistently as possible. Just like he uses consistent spacing in his stripes. Okay. Then I'm going to do that on the other side as well. I'm going to turn my book just for a second because it's easier for me to work from this side so I'm not trying to fight with that binding. Okay, so I've laid that out with my pencil. Now the next thing is I want to document the colors that he was using in the patterns. So you'll find that he uses stripes in a lot of his work and there are different colors used for the stripes um, in different paintings. But one thing I noticed as I, as I was studying this artwork is that he often does stripes where he uses a lime green and then kind of like a darker grass green. So that's what I'm going to use for this. That means I'm also going to be painting in my patterns. Now, as you're thinking about where, which sections you're putting your patterns in, Remember to think about what pattern is going to make sense in a tinier box, what pattern you want to put in a large box. Okay, so I've already got this laid out, so I'm ready to paint, and I have mixed up my lime green paint. So we're going to go ahead in, and I am going to paint a stripe in using my lime green that I created. I do advise you to mix up a fair amount of the color to keep it consistent in your pattern. And you don't have to do the same pattern as me here. This is an example just to show you what the expectation is. I'm 
gonna switch to a smaller brush here for a second. Just so I have a little bit more control. So, some of you might think, well, let's paint the next one in with our darker, grassier green. I would not advise you to do that. Remember that anytime you have a wet watercolor and you put another wet watercolor beside it, they're gonna bleed together. So what I'm actually gonna do is I'm going to skip this one for now and I'm going to paint all of the lime green ones in before I go back in and add in that darker grassier green. And of course I would let that dry. And I'll show you the whole process for this one. So I'm gonna let this dry and then I will come back and finish painting the pattern in. Remember, I'm not gonna come back in and rush this and put in my darker green because if I do, the chances of it bleeding are pretty high and I don't want my work to be ruined and full of lots of bleed. So I'm gonna let this dry, I'll come back and finish it and we'll just kind of review what you need to keep in mind and what your job is on this assignment. Okay, it's been about 15 to 20 minutes and hopefully my stripes are fully dry. So now I can go back in with my second color. Remember that I let it dry so that my colors did not run or bleed together. So I'm gonna go in with that darker green that we saw used in many of Romero Brito's paintings. I'm gonna go ahead and put that in there because I'm not only documenting pattern, I'm also documenting how color plays a part in the patterns. And oh no, I just had something happen. I dropped a little droplet of water. If you have a tissue nearby, which thankfully I did, you just want to press down and pick that up so that it doesn't ruin any of the paint that was already there. So I'm gonna let that dry and we'll take, um, just talk briefly about this and review kind of what your goal is on this assignment. So in this part of the assignment, you are documenting Romero Brito's use of pattern and color. So in each one of your four sections that you drew, you are going to be drawing out a pattern, filling the whole space of each section. So I noticed I went all the way up even into those little corners, okay? So filling the whole space of the section with the pattern, and then once you have it drawn out, you're going to go back and identify the colors that Romero Brito was using with that pattern. So the colors that are used to create the pattern. And then you're going to paint those sections in using those colors that you've identified. You're going to do that for each of the four sections. And of course, if you have questions, Ask them to me in class and come to office hours if you need any extra help. All right, guys, can't wait to see what you come up with.